You can paint on any number of surfaces ranging from cloth to copper. The most popular surfaces are canvas and panel. Canvases can be made by the artist or bought from a supplier. Most of the time I work on panel because I like the firm surface and it suits my detailed way of working. Whatever support you choose, it's vital that it's primed properly as all subsequent layers of paint will be affected by previous layers. Canvases purchased from shops tend to be primed with universal primer and that is fine for student purposes but not ideal for great results as it is very absorbent. The best primers for oil paint are oil based and available from proper suppliers. The benefit of oil primers is that they do not suck the richness out of the paint and therefore retain better colour. That said, they take a long time to dry and are very smelly. For my panel painting I use a Thixotropic Alkyd oil primer. This is much better than water based primers but dries quicker than pure oil based primers. I paint on birch wood panels. A cheaper alternative will be MDF but it's not as good. These are three ply for strength and stability. I prime the panels with three coats of priming, allowing to dry between coats, as this provides a smooth surface. I then apply a red oxide ground. This ground provides a warm tone on which to work and also provides more adhesion for subsequent paint layers. I make the ground using Venetian red oil paint mixed with a small amount of distilled turpentine and dryers. You can use different coloured grounds, but I find this colour suits my way of working. I cannot stress enough how important priming and support preparation are for good end results, as all additional layers of paint are affected by the ones below. If you have purchased a canvas, then adding another layer of priming with the suggested primer will do wonders. The one big don't is emulsion paint. You must never use emulsion paint to prime canvas or panel as it is chalk based and will sap the colour from oil paint. It will also crack on canvas. Essential materials. Distilled turpentine for initial paint layers. Linseed stand oil for later paint layers and glazes. Turpentine substitute for cleaning palette and brushes. Dryers for mixing a ground and speeding up drying time of paint. You can use liquin, available from some art shops. Venetian red oil paint for coloring ground. Mix 50% paint with 10% distilled terps and 40% dryers. A good range of bristle and synthetic nylon brushes, which must be well cared for and cleaned with turpentine substitute and soap and water after use. The best quality oil paints that you can afford. I use Michael Harding paints along with artist quality Windsor and Newton and also some Wallace Seymour. These have high pigment content and better binders than other cheaper paints on the market and therefore are more versatile and give much better results. However, if you are starting out, then student quality is fine, but I would recommend buying a good white. White is mixed with a lot of colours, so it makes sense to buy the best. Palette with double dipper for distilled terps and oil. Rag to clean brushes. Tin can to hold turpentine substitute for cleaning brushes. Suggested colours Titanium white Raw sienna Yellow ochre Burnt umber Burnt sienna Venetian red Cadmium red Alizarin crimson Magenta Ultramarine blue Cobalt blue Cerulean blue, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, yellow lake. Lay out your colours around the edge of the palette, leaving plenty of mixing space in the middle. Keep the yellows away from the blues and keep your colours clean at all times. Clean colour and clean brushes are vital for good results. Set up your still life. I sometimes use a cardboard box with a hole cut into it, like a little theatre stage. 
This enables me to control light better and provides me with more focus. I don't paint from photographs unless absolutely forced, as even with many years of experience, using photographs leads to different results. Painting from life provides much greater subtlety of color and tone, as the human eye works very differently to a camera. I set my easel up a comfortable distance away, but not too far. I personally do not use the sight size method. Draw out a rough compositional guide using white Conte crayon, then begin blocking in the dark areas an approximate color using oil paint diluted with distilled turpentine. Do not use turpentine substitute, as the next layers will not build properly if you do. Keep blocking in the image using the distilled turpentine to dilute your paint. Do not let the paint become too thick, but equally, it should not let the ground show through in this case. Try to judge one tone or color against another and build up the whole image. You should not be involved in any details at this stage. You must keep drawing with the paint and block the entire image in so it works in terms of tone and space. Having established the image, I now begin to refine the drawing by close observation. Note the addition of cherry stems, reflection on cherries, and more detail added to the glass. This is all done whilst the paint layer is wet. The painting is slowly taking shape after approximately two hours of solid work. Slowly, detail is building up on the glass by close observation of the shapes of the reflections. Note the circle just under the rim. This is the reflection of the lamp I've used to light the still life. I decided it did not help the image, so lost it later on. I am not a camera. More refinement on glass and reflections on cherries. I am still using distilled turpentine at this stage. After four hours of solid work, the paint is getting too wet and detail is becoming more difficult to add without the color getting dirty. Time to stop for the day and let it dry. Because distilled turpentine has been used, the paint will dry overnight and the next layer will take well without messing up what has been achieved. Turpentine substitute will not do this in the same way and that is why it's only for cleaning brushes. Clean your brushes well. On returning to a thoroughly dry painting, I decided to add another cherry to the right of the composition as it seemed to require more weight on the right to make the image stronger. At this point, I added a small amount of stand oil and dryers to my distilled turpentine in order to build up a richness of color. At this point, I'm still working with the same paint consistency, but these additions will build another layer of depth into the painting. You will now note that the painting begins to become shiny. This is because I'm reducing the distilled turpentine and adding more oil and dryers, about half and half, and working in thin layers of paint called glazes. To make a glaze, you need very little paint, just enough to tint the oil. At this point, your palette and brushes must be uber clean. In these final glazing stages, it is difficult to show differences as they are very subtle color and tonal adjustments. You can see that I have added my initials to the final image. The final painting will be left to dry for a number of days before varnishing with retouching varnish. This varnish will pick up any areas of dead color and give the painting an overall luster. Oil paintings take years to dry properly as the paint dries from the outside inwards, so do be careful and make sure the surface is dry before applying varnish. This is just one of many ways of working, but it is an approach that covers basics and one that can be applied to any subject matter in the studio. To paint outdoors requires a more immediate approach. Always buy the best materials you can afford and keep your equipment clean.